How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scott Moss, and in today's video, this is going to be something new for us. So I'm trying to get a little more organized, and, and in this video, it's going to be one of the first in a new series where I'm going to be talking to experts like Gary Tan here, uh, my friend, colleague, managing partner of our firm, Initialized. And I want to talk to him about his journey through working at a startup and now as an investor, because a lot of you have been asking what that journey is from different perspectives. And here I am, I got the legend here himself. So we're going to talk to him to see, you know, how that went and hopefully we'll learn something. How's it going, Gary? Thanks for having me on your channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, we, uh, me and Gary did something else where I'm on his channel. So please, you know, if you want to see him interviewing me, there's a link in the description. Go check that out. So Gary, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things that a lot of people ask me is just like, when is the right time to start a startup? How do you know when to start a startup as a builder, as someone who has been an engineer or a designer? Like, how did you know it was the right time for you? That's a super good question. I guess I have like two ways to look at it. The first one though, is uh, something that was taught to me by uh, one of our colleagues, Andrew Sather, one of the fellow principals here yes, at Initialized. Yes. He actually gave me my first job as a 16 year old. Uh, I learned how to- Oh wow, my... you were 16. I didn't know, wow. Yeah, yeah. He, no, he gave really me my took first, a chance on you. Yeah, my first coding <laughs> job. Like wow. I cold emailed all of the uh, top web design firms in San Francisco and uh, his firm was called Jacency. Mm. At some point, I was like, you know, asking him, cause he was CEO, he started that firm. Yeah. Uh, he ended up selling that uh, to another design firm for, I don't know, like 50 to $60 million during the first Web 1.0 boom. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, once we joined that other firm, it was this billion dollar uh, public company. Yeah. And suddenly me, like the 17 year old, the year after was running around teaching, uh, you know, 30 year olds wow. with like MIT degrees how to write their first uh, web-based, database-backed apps. Oh my goodness. So it was hilarious, <laughs> but that was like what it was like in 1999 yeah. and 2000. Wild times. So I you know, looked at him and I said, well, A, thank you for giving me that chance mm. and that job. You know, I didn't know anything mm. about anything really. I was just like, you know, taking Bart in and taking in like, this is what business is like. This right. is what, you know, having professional clients is what yeah. they're like. And then I asked him, well, I, someday I want to be CEO or mm -hmm. I want to do what you did. Like, how should I think about it? Right. And then he took me around to the different departments at the design wow. at the firm. So, you know, I was in engineering, obviously. I was like writing the code that like hooked up all their designs to the database and yeah. like ran it on the servers. And then he was like, Gary, if you want to be CEO and if you want to start something, anything, you need to understand what each of these people do because that's actually your job is to like take yeah. this, like all these different people who are very different, have different backgrounds. Uh, and then you have to speak their language. You have to be able to hire them. You have to be able to manage them. Yeah. And then a great company is actually the symphony of all these different people who don't know, like you might not even understand each other, right. but you got to understand them right. in order to manage them and make a good, good place for them, for wow. them to do their best work. Just going forward a little bit, you, you finally decide you want to start the startup. And then you started working on this thing called Postures. How did you get there? How did you know that's the thing you wanted to work on? And, and you know, navigating the whole VC space, raising money, like, like, how did that happen? I mean, I guess you have to, on my channel, actually, there's a video you can watch called uh, My $200 Million Mistake. Oh, So yeah. you gotta watch that. <laughs> you gotta watch first. that one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's a big part of the story. <laughs> I mean, the long story short, though, yeah. is like, uh, I mean, I got lucky. I like went to school, I got into the right school, and like my classmates at Stanford started a company with Peter Thiel, which is like, what are the odds? Coming into it, you know, I was employee number 10. When they uh, asked me to come quit my job at Microsoft to come work for them, they actually said, we'll give you, you should come be the first engineer and uh, we'll give you 1% of the company. <laughs> Which, you know, probably didn't sound like a lot, it didn't but sound it, like it a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it turned out to be like, it would have been hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. actually. Yeah. But in that moment, the company wasn't worth, you know, the $20 billion is worth today exactly. in the public markets. It was yeah. worth like maybe $10 million yes. or $5 million <laughs> or something. <laughs> You know, the thing was, I was right though. Mm. It's like, they probably needed to offer close to four yeah. or five, especially at that moment. Yeah. And I think later, I, you know, when I actually met people at y, who had gone through Y Combinator, I realized it was completely inverted where, mm. um, you know, in this case, Peter Thiel was, 
you know, bankrolling this for millions of dollars. And he was the guy with 80% of the company mm. on day one. And, you know, here I was, the engineer who was going to come in and build all the stuff. Right. I was going to get 1%. It didn't make sense. Right. right yeah. So in retrospect, it was like, actually, like, that, was, there, that wasn't wrong. Like, right. my inclination wasn't wrong. Right. I remember... One day there were some uh, YC founders who came in and I remember my coworkers making fun of them because they heard like, oh yeah, they, they went through this thing called Y Combinator. They gave away 7% of the company for $20,000. Yeah, totally ripped <laughs> off. What a, what a bunch of morons. Yeah. And then I went back and like started reading Hacker News and I started reading uh, Paul Graham's essays. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second, I have half a percent of this company. They have 93% <laughs> of their company. <laughs> Who's the moron? Right. <laughs> and so of course, like about a year later, I ended up applying to Y Combinator with wow. a friend of mine. What's funny is the useful lesson from that is um, you know, we didn't on day one make WordPress. We didn't make like a blog platform mm. that could do all the things that you needed to like replace a WordPress. And that's because it's 2008. Like the right time to start a blog platform was like eight years earlier yeah. or something. It was like way <laughs> yeah. too late to do that. Yeah. So when it's super crowded, you have to almost completely focus on what is new or novel. Mm. And that was like one of the lessons for us. How was like the journey of, of you know, raising money like i mean i know you went through yc and, a, and there's a lot of education and and you know lessons from there about this is how you interact with vcs and stuff but like there's a lot of companies that come out of yc that don't raise money so like you know you obviously did something different or learned something like what was that process for you i guess we were lucky in that like we already had built the product and it was something that like about ten thousand people were using every single day and so a lot of the the angels that we got were a lot of the people who built a lot of the stuff we used like mm. Our first angel was uh, Satish Dharmaraj, who's actually a managing director at Redpoint now. Oh, wow. He was actually the lead engineer at Sun Microsystems for uh, Java server pages, oh, wow. which I used <laughs> when I was an internet son. So I was like, these guys are legends. Like right. they had built the stuff that I used before. Right. One of our angel investors was a guy who invented nonlinear video editing. Oh my goodness. So, you know, Bill Warner, He's based in Boston. He created Avid Technologies, like public trade, publicly traded like company. All these movies are made yeah. with it. So the cool thing about meeting angels is that game recognized game, yeah. right? Like if you make something good, other people who ha can and have made great things will come and look at that and be it. like, oh, I recognize you. Yeah. And then they would talk to you. Like the most crazy thing for me, once we, we were only raised, uh, was, I mean, this is crazy because it's like such a small amount. It's like, we were really proud of this. $700,000 at wow, a wait. two uh, $3 million pre-money. Right? <laughs> and we're like, oh my God, this is so much money. And it's like, which is ridiculous because now, yeah. you know, the average YC class, if like someone raises it 20 mil pre, they're yeah. like mad. They're yeah. like, oh my God, my, you know, this guy got 30 pre. Like, and I'm like, guys, do you understand? Like, this is only 10 years ago, you know, Dropbox got 2 million pre. Like, 2 million you know? pre. Help me, I'm poor. But anyway, I mean, the cool thing about that whole process is just meeting people who have made stuff. Yeah. You know, now you're running the startup. You have to transition from being this person that just creates all day and now you got to manage people. Like, mm -hmm. how was that transition for you? When you and, and how did you know you needed to do that? Oh, I will say that I never learned that. And <laughs> and it actually directly led to the downfall of the company, I would say. There you go. <laughs> I will say that like, I got addicted to building the thing, mm, right? Yeah. Like I love the design, I love uh, to code. And uh, I mean, believe it or not, I was doing the DevOps for it too. Doing everything. <laughs> so, which was so dumb in retrospect. Yeah. We, we even raised a, you know, $10 million series A and it just sat in the bank. Mm. Like we burned almost nothing. We hired very few people. And that was like a huge mistake because we had a very specific window to win. The craziest thing is like, we thought that we were competing with Tumblr, which in Tumblr ended up selling for a billion dollars right. to, to Yahoo. And then of course now it's worthless. Like they just sold it for parts because yeah. nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. <laughs> that like to me, is sort of very interesting because as a founder, you have to pick who your competition is. Like you have to pick a game that actually matters. Right. And it turned out that like being a free or yeah, basically free blog platform, that wasn't like <laughs> worth anything actually. Like 
even though like the blogs talked about it like it was worth something right. like even vcs when we pitch people for our different like for seed or series a like we talked about it like yeah. oh yeah like being the blog platform matters yeah and it, you know now sitting here like 10 20 years later 15 years later it's like yeah. oh no that didn't matter right. you know what did matter instagram mattered. yeah <laughs> so we were growing like 10x year on year year after year and then the day that we flatlined, it was the it was the moment that Instagram came out. Oh wow! Chris Saka, one of our angel investors, uh, emailed us the day that uh, Instagram came out because he was also invested in Instagram. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey guys, what do you think of this?" <laughs> and before I could respond, my co-founder replies and he says, "It sucks." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> And then in retrospect, that was actually a really important moment, mm. you know, because there was a shift. There's like sort of um, new elements on the periodic table that basically appear all right. the time. And, uh, you know, when those things actually work, they turn out to be Uber, they turn out to be Airbnb, they're Google, they're Facebook, yeah. they're Instagram, like Snap, TikTok, like whatever, like whatever yeah. huge company you can think of. Like there was sort of a moment in time to run in there and like be the one. Wow. And so meanwhile, I wasn't hiring people. Yeah. I didn't become a dev manager. Uh, I was just trying to like code it and put it all on my back. Yep. Yep. And uh, all of that was wrong. Yeah. I feel like a lot of builders who start companies run into that problem. Like it was a very common thing within like our group at YC, which was full of like technical founders starting technical products. And it was like they couldn't get out of that mode of just like, I want to build, I want to create. So like, it seems very common that that's how you, you know, came into startups. Uh, so like now transitioning forward, now you're like, I'm just going to start investing in companies now. Like, oh, what, what happened? What made you want to do that? You know, that's something that you decided on doing or did you just like capitalize on the opportunity that came your way? I mean, a lot of it was I was burnt out. I had like, you know, credit card debt, you know, me and my co-founder had a falling out. Our growth had been dead for like six months. The good thing was like Paul Graham and Jessica Livingston and Harj Tagger at the time, who was like the first outside partner hired yeah. at YC. They were like, well, you're a great designer. Come, why don't you just chill out and like, we'll pay you $30,000 a year and just spend like 20 hours, 10, 20 hours a week with the yeah. startups, like designing stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then I think at some point I just enjoyed working with founders so much that yeah. it would be too awkward not to make me a partner. <laughs> so I ended up becoming a partner. So there was something super addictive and powerful about, uh, you know, reading applications, seeing like what worked and what didn't. And, uh, you know, if you go over and click over to the other video with Scott and me on my channel, we talk a little bit at the end about like checkbox thinking, mm -hmm. right? Like yep. how investors or people who are hiring, yep. they're always using a checkbox like sort of list to be like, oh, check, check, check. Okay, turn off brain, like yes, yep. right? Yep. Or it's like check, check, oh, missing this, turn off brain, no, yep. right? And uh, what I realized at YC was that um, there was something really powerful about that application process because like YC is mainly, you know, engineering first founders. Yep we go in and we're like game recognizing. Right, you see it. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And so yeah. that was like the moment that, that it all clicked for me, which is like most of the world and most of the world's assets are controlled by people who are not builders. Uh, and so we came from like very different backgrounds than people who, you know, I don't, I don't have an inheritance. Right. Like, there's not, you know, I was happy to have Inherited like- some debt. You know, yeah, exactly, right? I was happy to have like, you know, a t-shirt. I don't know, right. as a exactly. kid, right? Yeah. But you know, the world sort of gave us the opportunity to build, to create, and to learn how to do that. Right. Uh, and then now what I realize is that's like the biggest asset that any of us can actually have. Like, oh. you know, we could sit in a Barnes and Noble in the computer section <laughs> and just, like pick up a book on databases or like learn what like third normal form is right yeah. and it's like i didn't have to pay for that like yep. Yep. you know it's free information it's you know and now it's like you could go on youtube and like learn about everything, everything. like you could go on career karma you yep. get like a network of people who help you get through whatever you need to get through yep. I, I i know i think a lot of that is probably why like i'm actually here at initialize because I, when I was pitching VCs, like I interacted with so many, you know, VCs and investors. And like when I interacted with Initialize back in 2018, like I was just left with something different. Like what you're saying, I was like, I feel like they like saw me, right? Whereas I feel like every other, most of the other firms, you know, they operate a little differently. So it was just, it was just something there. And, you know, I think 
deep back in my mind, I knew uh, this is what I wanted to do. So like, I definitely resonate with what you're saying there because yeah, we do operate that way. And I think founders like that, right? They really appreciate that. So yeah, that's pretty dope. Um, I think this is a good point to leave on. Uh, Gary left us with some good nuggets here, y'all. I hope he answers some of the questions that y'all are asking me. Uh, but like we said earlier, please go check out his channel. The link's in the description uh, where you can check out the video where he's interviewing me on some of the things that you guys wanted to see. And uh, yeah, I totally look forward to doing more of this with other people. If you have any suggestions of people you want to see, let me know. I'll try my best to reach out to them and, and we'll make it happen. Uh, but until then, see you in the next one.